So I'm going to show you a really quick and delicious. It's a chicken tagine, very, very simple with some butternut squash and some couscous. And it's a recipe from my latest book, Midweek Meals. So thank you so much for all the support. I know a lot of you have got the book. It's doing incredibly well, so I can't thank you enough. And I hope you're enjoying it. There's lots of recipes, slow cooker, a chapter in it which this recipe recipe pardon me can be done that's a slow cooker there and um, there's store cupboard is bare so if you haven't got much stuff and then one pan dinner so there's lots of recipes a hundred recipes in it enjoy it it's going down a bomb so thank you so much to everyone uh, we're going to do some couscous so what i've done uh, i just put up my story just uh, when you're toasting um or cooking couscous is just toasted off in a dry pan it just gets a lovely kind of nutty flavor you can do it in the oven but it can catch so what we have here is some stock cube a couple of pinches of salt and then we're going to put a little drizzle of rapeseed oil now i'm going to heat my skillet i'm using my small skillet for this i'm actually doing half the recipe that's in the book so i'm going to whisk this and then what we're going to do is literally pour the hot stock onto the couscous it couldn't be easier give it a nice whisk and then just let that just kind of cook out so double wrap it with some cling film and just let that sit there so try and get it as tight as possible and you know couscous i actually really do like it and it's lovely cold you can serve it uh, you know with some feta cheese and some maybe toasted pine nuts i think you need to get flavor in, in, into it to be honest with you so if i was normally doing that i'd put lemon zest and herbs into it but to me to be honest with you the tagine is where the real flavor is so we're going to use some of the lovely rapeseed oil this is a kind of like a quick tagine so i've made this recipe a similar recipe in the cookery school with lamb shoulder and you literally cook it for about two two and a half hours where this one will be done 20 25 minutes it really is quick and delicious a couple of cloves of garlic one onion which is finely diced okay you can slice it it doesn't really matter and then we're going to put some root ginger into this so i'm going to grate the root ginger i'm going to crush the garlic and we're going to start that cooking process and then i'll show you how to do the butternut squash so just using uh, my microplane we're going to literally just grate some ginger just onto the board here so lots of that scrape all that that's left there okay so that's going to be roughly about half a teaspoonful there and then we're going to crush so i may as well just do it all together crush some of that nice garlic so i'm just using my garlic crusher and then we can put this all on top i'll use my small knife of your onion and then all into the bowl so two cloves of garlic gather all that up there we don't want to waste anything and then our lovely ginger i love ginger it's really really important and delicious and gorgeous and really important in this recipe so one clove of garlic another one so that's two big cloves of garlic just peel them and then just literally what you do is just literally crush them okay so that goes in there now perfect so into the pan turn it down we don't, don't want to get a huge amount of color we're just going to start the cooking process give it a nice stir so while that's on cooking how you um, cook it is just lightly cook it for a minute or two and just put the lid on in a low heat it's called sweating off so it's going to kind of steam fry the actual um, ingredients so that's a couple of cloves of garlic some root ginger and uh, an onion you can use red onion so this is our butternut squash I've just literally peeled it with a potato peeler and then I'm just going to sh show you how to prepare this so using a big chef's knife I'm only doing a small bit because I have some done. And we're going to cube this. It's lovely in a soup. Lovely roasted with a little touch of maple syrup and also some balsamic and a little bit of thyme. Works really, really well. So this is going to go in to our tagine. So let's have a look back in the pot. So I already have the tagine in the oven cooked. This can be done in the slow cooker. It's the same process, but in the slow cooker, which is behind me here, you have a high heat a medium and a low heat and it takes about four hours in a slow cooker whereas in the oven and on the heat about 20 25 minutes so literally that's a small butternut squash which is going to go into the pan a little bit more oil it's just beginning to catch i like the rapeseed oil you know from my videos that i use it a lot you could use olive oil but i think uh, some lovely irish rapeseed oil is great in this okay I want to talk to you about some lovely spices that I'm using. 
we have them here so these are part of the simply better collection you've seen me using lots of them they're from a company they're all organic called oco they're based not loan so we had turmeric this is so intense so be careful like i've got some of these chopping boards and it's really difficult to get out of this is some mild curry powder you could in this recipe put some of the simply better harissa spice if you wanted to and then some cinnamon some ground cinnamon so you've seen me poaching lovely berries with that so cinnamon and honey are the two interesting spices in uh, a tagine and it's not meant to be hot at all it's meant to be what we call aromatic so what i'm going to do everyone if we come over here we're going to put in okay three spoonfuls and that's a large teaspoonful of the mild curry powder we're going to put in two of the turmeric and then the cinnamon now you want to go easy on the cinnamon you can always add more of the cinnamon towards the end but I'm going to use what we call a small espresso spoon roughly about half of that okay you can always add more to that now put the lid on that and what I like about these spices they're not in huge quantities so it's better to buy often and buy fresh I think that's the key they're just wonderful uh, producers based on that loan Oco all organic they're wonderful now let's just coat everything just if you can look here and you can do this in the bigger skillet pan I know a lot of you have got it already but this is the baby skillet because I thought I might as well do the smaller skillet when I'm doing half the recipe so coat that and then we're going to put in the San Marzano tomatoes so these are just wonderful these are the chopped tomatoes I seem to be using so many of them so they're excellent definitely one of your store cupboard essentials well one of mine anyhow now we're going to turn this up and we're gonna you can hear that sizzle a little bit of chicken stock or you can use vegetable stock actually you can make this all vegetarian I should have said that cauliflower pumpkin a uh, sweet potato even a bit of broccoli and some wilted some spinach could go in at the last at the very end so you could make a purely vegetarian and then you use some vegetable stock same for the couscous actually it was vegetable stock cube that I used actually for the couscous so we're gonna stir this through we're gonna put a little bit of honey and then we're literally gonna pop our chicken in it's as easy as that guys it's such a simple quick recipe really it depends on the size that you cut the squash and I'm using the butternut squash and how quick it cooks the chicken actually cooks quite fast so it does so this is some lovely uh, honey and it's from uh, Malivan Foods based in Kilkenny so I'm gonna put a spoonful of this I don't want it too sweet and then at the very end because I have one made we're gonna put some lime juice into it so it kind of cuts through that sweetness because I think with the butternut squash that's kind of naturally sweet anyway you could do this with sweet potatoes too which would work really really well okay let's stir this through so with that lovely squash there and you could put chickpeas in at the end like you can mix and match it it's a great little dish guys because it will keep really really well it'll keep for four to five days in your fridge you can also freeze it you know that's the way I love to cook I love to batch cook so you can box it off in Tupperware containers pop it into the freezer label it date it so you know when you've done it so these are our corn fed um, simply better chicken breasts they're skinless there's no bone they're fed in maize I'm actually putting this in raw so that's two chicken breasts in there and then we're literally going to stir this through here so if you were to do this in the slow cooker you would take the center part of the slow cooker out brown off a little bit well lightly kind of cook exactly what i've done and um, put the chicken in and it does take about three and a half to four hours you start it off in the high in the slow cooker and then move it down to a low heat okay so that's that there we can season up at the end i already have uh, one coat i'm just going to do play musical chairs i'm going to take this one out so i popped it into the oven at 160 if you don't have a slow cooker mm. and then i'll just switch this off and i'm going to pop this in so these skillet pans are great because they can go into the oven up to 200 degrees but then again you can use a slow cooker so the slow cooker you put it literally on the heat onion ginger garlic squash spices tomatoes uh, all the other ingredients go in and then you literally put it back this is a very basic slow cooker but it's the it's the actual brand that we tested all the recipes um, in the new cookbook the slow cooker section so this is it here guys i'm going to give it a little stir oh smells good smells good 
and it actually becomes a little bit looser as it cooks out and that's the moisture coming out of that squash it smells great it's a good tomatoes good chicken you could actually make this as a base and say you were roasting a chicken if you had it left over you could use that so we're going to finish it off we're going to put in some lovely lime juice and remember this is important because it's going to cut through the sweetness of the tagine I think this is always a good dish if you make a day or two ahead particularly a day ahead it um, it actually improves in flavor all right so I'm going to move this over here I'm going to have a look at our couscous stir this through then put a little bit of pepper in it just a little bit and you can put in some lovely coriander into that the key is not to have the squash too soft and mushy that's not what you want so if you look at the texture of this I'll just get a small knife I'll just give it a little wipe that you can see what it's like so the squash that's cooked and the chicken it's cooked so it's fallen apart so that's really really important so that depends on the size of the chicken breast so let's get our couscous let's have a little look at it just remove the cling film lovely so it's fluffed up what I like to do now is just to get a fork and then just give it a nice little mix so it's really really nice you could put herbs into that but I honestly think there's so much flavor in this dish and then we just get a spoon here oh actually that's the spoon I want perfect so with the couscous then we're just going to arrange it on the plate so just arrange that a couple of spoonfuls of that and then our beautiful tagine so this is the chicken tagine that we're doing remember I've done this with lamb shoulder which will take much longer to cook so you get that lovely I'll just bring over the plate so arrange it just on top of the couscous you can serve it with rice not everyone likes couscous but I think this is so tasty and comforting and not spicy it should be sweet and aromatic that's the best way to describe it and there's one thing that I forgot is uh, what I would serve I don't have them here is some toasted flaked almonds I just forgot to get some of them a little bit of mint just gonna very quickly chop that and coriander and then we are good to serve up a little bit of yogurt on the side if you want have some lovely yogurt this is from Cologne farm they're based in County Wexford it's a natural yogurt there's no sugar added into it I've used it a lot I actually use it every week for I make Bircher muesli I love that so I do so some lovely fresh herbs just sprinkle it all over gives lovely freshness that is as quick and a delicious tagine as you'll ever make and that is my chicken and squash uh, I use the butternut squash tagine with that lovely couscous so I hope you try this recipe and um, that's half the recipe it's from the new book midweek meals just to show you again so thank you so much I know you're all enjoying it and it's doing really well number one cookbook in Ireland so happy cooking and uh, thank you so much everyone enjoy this recipe